<laughs> this gig you're working on now, you're a guest correspondent yes. on this ABC show that you were uh, a fan of already called What Would You Do? I mean, yeah, this show, What Would You Do? It's been on the air. It's for like 15 seasons. It's one of those shows that like a lot of people don't think about, but if you describe it to them, they're like, oh yeah, I've seen that show. It's like, it's John Quinones sets up these sort of like uh, prank things, but always with like a sense of like, will people help? And so it's been on the air for a long time. It's big on social media. It's big with TikTokers. Mm -hmm. But it's like, it's so because there's all these short clips of seeing people in awkward situations uh, trying to figure out what people would respond to that situation. So I've seen it and thought it was a good show, but never in any way thought that I would be invited to be a part of it. But I got a call because uh, to because the skills that I think I've developed over the years seem to be applicable to this. So and I got to film it in Mobile, Alabama, which is my which is my dad's hometown. So so you said I want to film this. Did you choose Mobile or was it just a nice coincidence? It, I mean, they knew I was from Mobile. They they chose it for me. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I think also because John was like, I'm not going to Alabama. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> and you can only film it in certain states because you can't do. Uh, hidden camera shows and like you can't do them in California. So of course you can do them anywhere in the South because the laws are just, you know, like so. There are no laws. Yeah, so you can, so. So some you know, of the things, I mean, I, I, the times I've seen the show, I think I saw one where there was a, either a pregnant woman or a woman pretending to be pregnant and her husband's or her partner's berating her for like, you gotta lose weight. And they're mm -hmm. just trying to see if anyone yeah. is gonna do anything. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's nice because I always like it, obviously, when when people rise to the occasion. Yeah, I think it's sort of, you know, we live in this time of like, I mean, it's been overstated. It's the most divided. It's the most polarized. Da, da, da. And it just sort of shows that, like, people will generally step up if they if they if they can help in some small way. You know, it's not a similar or crossbow level of help. But if there's some <laughs> sort of like, I can tell you to like, I see you being taken advantage of. Let me help you out. So, yeah, it's a, it's it is heartwarming at a time of heart. It's heartwarming at a time of heart coldening. <laughs> In this country. Yeah. Are you a, uh, uh, this gets tricky, but I always lean slightly optimistic even during these times. And sometimes I get shit for that, but I do read a lot of history and I'm reading a book now about uh, 19th century and an election where the country's completely divided and one side thinks the other side cheated and there's a lot of misinformation and Samuel Tilden thinks that he won the presidency, and but there's this massive fight between Hayes and Tilden, and I'm reading it and going, oh, we've been here before. Like, I keep reading things and mm -hmm, thinking, we've mm -hmm. been here before, the difference being now that we have the internet. But I, I try to always maintain some calm, but unfortunately my rallying cry is, hey, everybody, things have always been kind of shitty. <laughs> <laughs> If Take it easy. It was, re you know, there was a lot of misinformation, cruelty, you know, yeah. and just overall cruddiness for hundreds of years. And uh, that doesn't seem to cheer people up. If the up. country can overcome Samuel Tilden. Yeah. <laughs> like you all yeah. remember how hard that was. Yeah. During the Samuel, it was a big deal. It was a big deal. If they, people they were bringing, uh, you know, weapons to Congress and well, threatening each other. I can't other. even imagine. And, and yeah. I was reading about it and I was thinking, wait, wait a minute. This is madness. This is, you know, we've done this before. Can't believe we've been doing this podcast for five years. Lots changed what? in the what? world. I don't know. We have flying cars now. Do we? Time transport. Oh. Lots changed. But you know what? There's also things that haven't changed. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? No. Great taste of Miller Light. Yeah. Hasn't changed. It was the original light beer. And to this day, for my money, it's still the best one. It's good. I'll fight anyone that disagrees. Will you? Well, not with my, I'll have someone fight for me. <laughs> Miller Light has more of the taste you want, less of the stuff you don't. Yeah. Yep. Undebatable quality. Great taste. Only 96 calories. That's good. It's the beer that strips away everything you don't need, holds on to what matters most. A light beer that tastes, hello, like beer. Yeah, not like water that's just kind of beery. Yeah, exactly. I don't like that. Yeah. That's a bad name for a beer, too. Water <laughs> that's mostly beery. The original light beer since 1975. That's right. Times change, but you can always enjoy the great taste of Miller Lite. Tastes like Miller time. I came up with that. <laughs> Get Miller Lite delivered right to your door. Visit MillerLite.com slash Conan. Or you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories per 12 ounces. I always feel like optimis optimism only means something if people are doing the work to yep. make the, the optimism make sense. Right. So I think that like, I think some people like to use optimism as a way to sort of go, I it's going to be fine. Anyway, back to uh, Love right. at First Sight or whatever that show yeah. is. Uh, you know, like, anyway, right. back to this video, this guy getting this crud out of this ear. <laughs> uh, but I think that if you're not 
literally, and I'm, you know, doing the work to make things better, or you're not in some way putting yourself out there to help, then the optimism is ill-founded. But as a student of history, you also know, like, no country's on top forever. So I feel like we might be in the, like, so I think the world might be fine, but America might be, like, you know, over. Oh, but we did. <laughs> Jesus. But all the time we have for today. <laughs> To wrap things up now. Ooh. How come that makes me? But wait a minute. So how come? How come? But then the question is, what is it? What does it mean when they say it's over? Like sometimes people say to me, "Oh, there's going to be a civil war," and I say, "Well, it's not going to be 1861, where the country's divided over a fairly neatly defined Mason-Dixon line, and you've got northern and southern mm -hmm. states. It's going to be." Oxnards fighting with Malibu. Like it's gonna be <laughs> I'd like yeah, to see that show. Exactly. But <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's yeah, yeah. I don't understand how there's a and then I also feel like, yes, people are really riled up, but they're they're also gonna want to still be able to go to their ATM and get their money and then uh go to that movie they want to see or whatever. They're gonna want to go to that restaurant they want. I, I don't I don't see what it looks like. What is what is the civil war gonna look like? This I mean, one? I, I I you know, I think that I don't know exactly how it plays out, but I do think that there's like if like when people go to see Rome, what are you going to see when you're what are the things that the, the tourists want to see? Like the ruins of yep. what used to be. So I think you might be like, this used to be a restaurant I went to. Now I take pictures with tourists out here. You know, like I think that there's an idea that like what this country has symbolized in the world. Like, think about it. Even just think about something as simple as immigration. Wait, so our, I mean, uh, it just feels like they have, just keep in mind, they have amazing, they have the Coliseum. Mm -hmm. And you're saying that we're going to be. SoFi Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. Okay. All right. I was picturing like a cheesecake factory that has, oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. got vines this, growing all over this it. This was a food court. You yeah. don't imagine yeah. they had. Italian food, but also Greek food, but also <laughs> it's but called Seven anyway. Eleven, but yeah. it was open twenty four hours. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. go ahead, you were making a serious point. No, I, no, I don't have to do that. No, no, I want to hear it. No, I think that like even think about this, like with immigration, this country was whatever it was because we had the best publicists going, who said if you're smart somewhere in the world, go to America, yep. and you can then make you can then be the best version of yourself. And so we got credit for a lot of people coming here. To then give us their talents and then be American, you know. Yep. And now I think if you're if you're some smart kid growing up somewhere on the other side of the planet, you're like, is that really? Is, is America the place I want to go? So then some other place becomes that place. And I'm not. I, what that I place mean, is. I, look, I don't. I know Google every day, like, what's the new America? Yeah, yeah. where are they going? Yeah. Because I I still think when I travel around that I do think p people are still interested in coming to the United States. No, I think, I just think, but yeah. But you're I just think, think like, you're just looking ahead. You're yeah. saying. <laughs> I'm looking post-November. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you meant the near future. <laughs> oh, we're the, okay. Yeah, we did. I got till November. I'm just thinking about like a December 1st, maybe when things have, I mean, you know, I just don't, you know, I don't know what, I don't know what happens. Uh, people ask me to know what happens. People always go, "Come on. like." Actually, I get this question a lot. Like, "Are you hopeful? Come out." And people want me to be hopeful because I think that means they don't have to do anything. Yeah, I want you to be. That's why I asked you. Yeah, yeah. You because want me to be like? I want it's you. Fine. I want you to say it's fine, mm -hmm. so then I can go yogurt shopping. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and that's why I'm, I'm just like, that's I'm looking for a gated community <laughs> that has three gates. Yes, one inside the other. And uh, then you could say, "I don't have an alarm system. I just have three gates. I have yeah. nine gates." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I I don't know. I I uh I uh, It well, doesn't have to be this way. Like uh, there are things we can do to make this to make this country uh better than it is, but we have to be invested in outcomes that are outside of just if it's better for us in particular. And Americans have a hard time with that, you know. Yeah. So like you drive through cities and you see sites of things that go, this didn't used to look like this, or these people didn't used to live like this in this way. And we drive past and you go, well, good luck to those people. But, you know, I think that like we have to be invested in the success of the community. And I think one thing that's happened politically in this country is a lot of people in this country are really uninvested in community. They're more invested in themselves. Right. Yeah. If you could just... Well, because we are, everything is global now. So mm -hmm. because of the internet, everything is global. And so everybody's thinking about these global issues as opposed to uh, what it, I've got four, I, in my four block radius, what can we do to make mm -hmm. things better for people? What mm -hmm. can we do to, uh, to help you know, there's a person sleeping outside right there and this is our neighborhood and what are we collectively, what's our response as a neighborhood? But you're right, everything, uh, I think it's very hard. It's very easy for people to 
just surf online and be made in rage. That's my my feeling these sure. days is that there's a lot of anger and anger can be very useful. It's a very useful state of mind if it's applied to something. Yes. But I think what the world we're living in now is anger that you wanna plug it into some kind of crank or you wanna plug it into an outlet and turn it into something positive. But I think right now where it's become kind of a, a sport on both sides, right and left, just getting incredibly angry. And well, I, I think I think that's I think that is because of how we again we're talking about social media and YouTube. Like because if you let the algorithm run you, the algorithm will always push you towards anger. Yes. So the algorithm runs on us all being like you're you're more likely to be like oh, I hate that guy and click to the next thing than like isn't that nice. So I think that like that's why it's on both sides is because because if you're getting if you're sort of really like locked in on social media. You will be you you'll be angry all day, and because that's what social media wants you to be. So I think for me, I've had to really like sort of like you know like I got off of Twitter once. Uh, <laughs> once I mean I'm on it, but I'm not on it like I used to be. I really thank Elon Musk for breaking my addiction to Twitter. That was a good thing he did there by buying it. But uh, it's just like I've of really being aware of like how much you're sort of just going down the doom scroll, you know? Because I think that's that's what social media runs on, and I think we've really that is not helpful to anything. So for me, when I post on social media, I try to give people an opportunity to engage or help instead of just, isn't this sad? Isn't this terrible? Yeah. Or at least, or, you know, or laugh. Like, isn't this funny? It's, I think, isn't this funny is way better than isn't this sad with no with no help attached to it. Right. Yeah. Well, I think, uh, I mean, that brings it back to comedians. I think comedians are the real heroes. Oh, God. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh. Isn't that where we were going? <laughs> yeah, that's a, mm. I think if there's any if there's any superheroes in this world, oh. true. I is. don't I don't need that gig. If there's anybody who really, I mean, the true Purple Heart winners <laughs> are the comedians in basements and nightclubs around this country. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 just specific ones with podcasts. Oh, 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 oh. yeah. I mean, well, we podcasting zero... is really the real. <laughs> yeah, that's the real know. hero. First of all, just even getting a podcast shows that you've really decided to become a hero. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the heroes used to be late night hosts, and then about two and a half years ago, I feel like it switched over. Oh. Yeah, it's weird. So, yeah. It's, it's that timing Who is can weird. say why?